We're back with my second OOTP tutorial. Let's talk sound modifications. For those of you who play full games in the ballpark, you know OOTP isn't quite as visually appealing as the mainstream sports games, to be nice about it. That's not really the point of the game, though. And at the same time, a hugely underestimated and underrated facet of OOTP is you can customize the entire in-game sound palette. It's a very cool way to create some more immersion and bring your own personality into your game. So what I'm gonna do today is share some basics about game sounds, where to find them, how to place them in the game, and even how to make your own. I'm not always gonna get into step-by-step -step instructions. The goal here is to provide the right level of detail for you to get started. There's probably some other YouTube videos out there that go a little bit deeper. Uh, chapters are gonna be marked if you wanna skip around. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up comment with any questions, or if you want to add anything for the rest of the audience, please feel free. So let's go. So for starters, this is the sounds folder inside your OOTP directory. It's not always going to be in the exact same location as mine, but it's by default always OOTP baseball 22 backslash sounds. All the sounds you hear in game are stored here. Notice all the files are OGG format. That may new, be new to some people, and I'll cover it later, but for now, all you need to know is OGG and that it's nothing to be afraid of. So you'll notice there, and I, and I can jump back, that there's a science here to some of the, uh, the name prefixes. Uh, the prefix of the file dictates when the sound can play. So this is a list of the options. You'll see there's some background ones that are just more of like your ambient noises. There's the actual like action sounds like the ball hitting the bat or bunts or safe calls, strikeout calls. And then there's more like crowd reacting to different things that are happening in the game. Cheers, boos, home run calls, things of that nature. So you can use as many of these or as few of these as you would like. What I want to do real quickly is play a sample um, of six of these files just to give you a sense of the kind of things that you could do. So for starters, here's a kind of a chanting call. Okay, so another kind of ambient, just kind of things you would hear in the background with the crowd. What are we paying you guys for? Okay, he's upset. Uh, here's one that's the, the actual uh, crowd atmosphere. So that's actually kind of like what you'd hear in Oakland. Uh, simple crack of the bat. Yeah, nothing crazy, but you can add more of those too. And then how about a home run call? This is one of my favorites from 1984. And one last one for fun. How about a little favorite movie clip for maybe to throw in as a seventh inning stretch instead of the old take me out to the ball game. That's a fun one to throw in Jacob's Field. All right, so again, it's just a taste. Your mind may be just going in all directions right now. And that's awesome because you're going to have your own favorite things that you can put in there. So a couple things I, I want to call out. You can use all of these. The one I'm not going to recommend you use, at least right away, is this intro one. It's specific to players. The steps to get this in place is a little bit harder. Actually, might even be a lot harder than the rest. So that's the one I would just say steer clear of for the time being. Um, so the crowd prefixes, there's something special about those two. They're the background noise that will, uh, and what's different about them is the game will play that entire sound on a loop. So whereas all the other ones, it'll just kind of play it once at different points in time. Um, most, you know, if you play a game, it takes 20 minutes. It, you know, your sound file might only be three minutes long. It's just gonna loop it over and over again. So the crowd main and the crowd game are different in that sense. Um, 
So as you can imagine, if these files are just sitting in your game folder, then it's probably easy to add more of these, and you would be correct. Uh, you can have as many files for a given prefix as you want. Out of the park baseball, we'll just select them randomly throughout the game, except for the crowd main and crowd game. Those it just picks one randomly at the beginning and plays it the entire time. Um, so if you just have one file in your folder of a specific prefix, you'll hear it a lot. But if you have many, then you'll hear all of them at a at a lower rate. Uh, but question might be, where do you get these sounds from? Here's some good places to start. First, the Out of the Park Development Forum. These are fantastic. If you haven't been here before, you are definitely missing out. There's a lot to do in here, but for sounds, there's a link within the OOTP Mods section called OOTP Mods Sounds. It's the one shown in red on this page, fairly close to the bottom left. And when you click on that, this is the Out of the Park Mods Forum, for sound specifically. Um, really, you know, there's a lot going on in here. It's a great place just to talk about sounds and help each other on this journey that you've just started. Share some ideas, maybe ask if anyone's got a file you're looking for. But the first thing to do in here is just to find sounds that others have been willing to share. On this page alone, you can see that someone is sharing sounds of Tony LaRusso some calls by Joe Buck and Al Michaels, some player introductions, and some home run sounds. There's plenty more. So this is an awesome place to start. Uh, each contributor is sharing through their platform of choice. OOTP does not host these files. So when you actually follow their links, sometimes they'll take it to Dropbox, some will go to Google Drive, Mediafire, really whatever they want. Um, so I can't show you download instructions because each process is slightly different. But I will say I've never really had much trouble downloading any of these files to my computer. The only thing you need to remember is the folder where you're placing these downloads. One more place you could check out, not one more place, like I guess it is one more place. It's called the internet. Uh, but you know, this is a, this is um, one website. You can download sounds from any number of public websites out there. There's more than I can possibly think of. Freesoundslibrary.com is just one example. Uh, just do a Google search for sound files and you'll have just tons of options. There's one drawback to the more of the public space. Um, these files usually don't come in that OGG format. Still download them. I'll show you how to convert those to OG, OGG later in the video. All right, so this is, in my case, where I kind of put my files. I just put them in my downloads folder. I'm a Windows user. Um, from here, I just need to move these files into that specific OOTP sounds directory that we looked at earlier. Now, a fair question is why didn't I just save the files straight to my OOTP sounds folder? And that's a fair question. You can do that. There's nothing stopping you. The advice is, like, is caution because a lot of these creators will have the same generic file names. So like look at these ones, for example, stretch three, stretch two, rally six. The prefix is important. After that, you name it whatever you want. So not, they just kind of get numbered. Well, sometimes they use the same f names for different files. So I like to get them in just like this downloads folder and then rename them and then move them. And I'll typically, you know, like right, you know, rally three, that might be like a Yankees Derek Jeter chat. I'll say rally three Derek Jeter so later on I know okay I've you know there's my Derek Jeter chant if I want to get rid of it or if I want to do something different with it um yeah so that's it um one more wrinkle here pretty big wrinkle actually everything I've shown you so far is for universal sounds or sounds that will play in any game you play in any sim in any stadium that's good in some cases like a basic slide sound or a generic home run call. But I don't want Sweet Caroline playing in Yankee Stadium. I don't want the Tomahawk Chop playing at Tropicana Field. There's a lot of these sounds that you may be thinking of that are meant for specific stadiums or specific teams. So let's go through how that works. This is what my sounds folder really looks like. Yes, I could scroll down further and below all these folders, you would still see all those original OGG files that I showed you earlier. I promise, they're really there. 
but I've made a folder for each stadium in my save. And then if you're if any of the names are looking kind of peculiar to you, it's because I play historical. So it's all the stadiums from that era. So let's just go into one park. We'll go to Fenway Park. This is my this is my Fenway Park folder. How it works is if you play a game at Fenway, the sounds inside this folder take over. If you're playing in a stadium without a matching folder, then the game uses the files from the base sounds folder we've been using previously. So to get started with this, I suggest just doing one folder for your home games. Then the default will be the default folder will be used for your away games, and then your team folder can be used for your home games. And if you want, you can start adding more folders and play, you know, each stadium uniquely. Um, you can even go with hybrid, I, sorry, hybrid options for each prefix. So what I mean by that is if I made a stadium folder and only save a seventh inning stretch file and nothing else, the game will use that stadium folder for the seventh inning stretch, but it will use the base folder for all other sound types. You can create these folders on your own, like Fenway Park's easy, Fenway underscore park. Um, but the game does require the folder name to match the stadium name exactly. So to guarantee that you get this right, here's the step I suggest taking. Go to that team's home screen, then choose settings, edit ballpark, and then sounds. You'll end up here. Um, what you can do from here is you'll see a couple buttons, and the one you want to choose is create sound parks folder. That option creates the folder with the right in the right place with the exact name that you need. And then you can actually choose the button right next to it, which is open park sounds folder. And uh, you'll actually, it'll take you straight to that, uh, that window, like in your Windows Explorer, for example, uh, and you can start loading files into it. So this is kind of just the way to guarantee that you get the names right. Um, and then, yeah, load files in there with confidence. What I've shown you pretty far so far is uh, it's gonna get you far along in your journey. Each stadium is gonna feel fresh and unique, uh, but it might not quite be you. We've been relying exclusively on the work of others so far. So what I'm gonna show you next is how to infuse your own sound choices into the game. So for me personally, I'm a big soccer fan, and one of my favorite things about it is I love the ambiance of the stadiums. Uh, nobody is sharing those. <laughs> So I wanted to go ahead and make my own. So how did I do that? So this is Audacity. It's free, it's simple to download. Just Google Audacity and go to, or go to its uh, www.audacityteam.org. There's no crazy pop-ups. I am not being paid to do this. It's just the easiest freeware type of solution out there. There's plenty of other software options. You're more than welcome to choose those instead. This just seems to be a common choice and not being much of an audio editor guy, I, I found this great. Uh, there's a number of things that you can do with this software, but let's just chat about the most important functions. First and foremost, you can record sounds with it. You can use your microphone if you wanna actually record your own stuff, or the more likely scenario is you will record sounds straight from your computer. So for starters, you could record a short segment of a YouTube video. Maybe it's got a old Major League Baseball game and there was a home run call that you want to capture. You can kind of scroll to the spot of the YouTube video, keep playing it, and then hit the record button. And now Audacity is recording that sound for you. And then the second big thing you can do is actually edit that recording. You can crop it down just to the parts you want. You can increase or decrease the volume to get that right. You can even increase or decrease the speed. The, all these icons, I've only figured out what half of them do. The upper, you know, the potential here is just kind of endless. Um, so I'm not gonna go into a tremendous amount of detail on how to use Audacity. There's tons of great YouTube videos uh, on how to use it. Um, personally, I was able to figure it out through some trial and error. Um, there's a bunch of things I haven't discovered yet. I'd say probably the hardest thing, I won't even call it hard, is like this microphone at, at the ribbon, there's like a microphone icon and a volume icon. It's just kind of getting used to like, okay, where's it actually recording it from? If you've got, if you've got a mic, if you've got, uh, you know, different speakers and, and stuff like that, you just gotta make sure you choose the right one. Uh, but other than that, I've really had no troubles 
Uh, and once you get the basics down, kind of just do whatever you want with this thing. So this is the important part when you've finished constructing your audio file. When you're ready, you save the file in that OGG format, but you don't hit save in the traditional sense to do this. You go to the ribbon, you choose file at the top left, um, and then you hit export, and then you go over to export as OGG. Remember, your, your, your job was to remember OGG. Here's where OGG comes in. Then you can choose the file and or the, the name of the file and the location of file from there. So you'd want to put it in whether it's your bass sounds folder or your stadium folder. One more thing I should call out here is notice you can see open there as well. So if you've downloaded a file from like that free sounds website and it's a WAV file, you can open it through Audacity and then immediately just turn around and export it as an OGG. So that's how you get everything into the OGG format like I mentioned earlier. Uh, one other thing to call out, sometimes some trial and error is needed with the volume. I find out of the park baseball generally plays sounds at lower volume than like the rest of your computer would. So to test, you can go back to that same sound screen that we visited earlier. And now that you've loaded sound into that folder, you'll actually see this screen serves as a spot to actually test them out. You can see all the sounds and it actually uses the prefix to put them into categories. Just click the play sound buttons next to those. And if it's too quiet or too loud, just open up the file back in Audacity, adjust the volume accordingly, and export it again. Just like write it directly over the existing version. Again, you don't want to do save or save as kind of thing. Um, and that's it. Now you've got your own touch, your own personal video, pr pretty much literally whatever you want to record, you can have it straight in your out of the park baseball game. So that is a wrap. I hope this was helpful for you and provided some great ideas. It's your game. You get to play it your way. Have some fun with this one. If you've got ideas to share or questions about my approach, feel free to put those in the comments. Until then, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Comment with any questions, as, as I mentioned. Uh, I'm always interested in what other people are doing with this, uh, what, what else you're interested in learning, if you've got other ideas. Uh, and then, yeah, just what else is interesting to you. So hopefully I'll see you out in the uh, developments forum in the sound mods area conversing. Maybe even take that extra leap of sharing some of your personal creations with the community. Until then, take care. Thanks.